welcome back or welcome if you are new to the week's nest my name is nicole and for today's video i have some more quick and easy neutral farmhouse valentine's diys for you and the best part about this video is it is part of a collab hop this was put together by heidi sambal over at happily thriving heidi so when you are done watching my video make sure you check the link in the description box to see who is next in this hop and if you're coming over from this collab hello and welcome i would love to have you consider hitting that subscribe button below for more easy budget-friendly home decor and diy inspiration so if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up say hi in the comments and let's get into today's video so for the first project we're gonna make a farmhouse wreath sign using this Dollar Tree pendant sign I love these my Dollar Tree always seems to have these in stock and I'm gonna go ahead and paint it with Waverly's chalk paint in ballet slipper but before I paint it you see me here using a pair of scissors I do not recommend this to get the glitter and grit off this sign I recommend using a sanding sponge like what you would find at Dollar Tree or any craft store but of course when I went to film this I could not find my sanding sponge so I'm just carefully using my scissors and scraping off the glitter once all of the glitter is scraped off the sign, I'm gonna take that ballet slipper paint and I ended up giving this sign two coats to really cover up all that was underneath it. There's a lot going on in this sign and I found that this definitely needed two coats. to see in this video I went with more of a muted pastel palette but let me know down in the comments if you do any decorating for Valentine's Day what color palette do you use more pastels neutral or the traditional red and brighter pinks so once that first coat is done I'm taking a Waverly's wax in antique and I'm going to take my sponge brush and just kind of smear over where that light wood is um, the sponge brush, I know it holds in a lot of paint, but it worked fine for this. And I just felt like the antique wax against that really light ballet slipper paint just looked so pretty. Also make sure that you paint the sides with the antique wax. And then I'm just going to give this sign my second coat of the ballet slipper Waverly chalk paint. So I decided to use my Cricut and you cannot see this because it's white vinyl but I with my Cricut just spell out love never fails you can really just do anything you want for this sign and if you don't have a Cricut there are so many options for getting the desired font or text that you want on your sign you can transfer with a pencil and trace you can mod podge a printed font or you can even use Dollar Tree letter stickers and if you saw me cutting the transfer tape, a little like tip for anyone that has a Cricut, you can reuse transfer tape. So sometimes if I don't have that much left, I will take the transfer tape and put it on the backing to another piece of vinyl or whatever I have. And I will just re-adhere that. It's a great way to kind of cut costs when it comes to using your Cricut. And I love the Dollar Tree transfer tape, but let me know down in the comments if you use it also from Dollar Tree, if your Dollar Tree has had it in stock lately. I have gone to three different Dollar Trees and I have not found it. So I really hope I can find it soon because I am running low. And as always, I always lose the dot to my eye when I'm transferring my vinyl. So I just took a Arteza chalk pen and it just did the white dot. Now I'm going to take this small grapevine wreath. This came in a four pack from Hobby Lobby. You can get something similar at Dollar Tree. Just really any small wreath form is fine. And taking some hot glue, I apply it to the back and then press it down, making sure that my font is in the middle of the wreath. Then I'm gonna take this really pretty frosted eucalyptus. I've used this in so many of my winter projects so far this year. This is from Walmart. You get this big full bunch with the pine cones and kind of the frosted berries for three or $4.97. I absolutely love this greenery. And I'm just taking with my scissors a leaf off at a time and kind of tucking in and like resting over the previous leaf. If that does not make sense the way I'm describing it, you can clearly see what I'm doing. 
and just kind of playing with the placement of that and using some hot glue as needed. You want to make sure that you fold back the green leaves so that you're not covering the font that we put in the middle. Once I have everything hot glued, I'm gonna take my scissors and just trim any extra like kind of sprigs from that great fine leaf, making sure that I can see the font and that the wreath looks nice and crisp. Now taking some scrap Dollar Tree lace ribbon. I always save my scraps. If you are not new to my channel, you already know that. And I'm just gonna cut on a diagonal where the pendant kind of meets and taking some hot glue, not too much. You don't want it to go through the holes of the lace. I am just going to have the border of the sign have this lace ribbon. And this is one of my favorite crafting finds from Dollar Tree. Let me know down in the comments if you like the lace ribbon from Dollar Tree or maybe what your favorite crafting item is from Dollar Tree. I always am interested to know. There's so many things there that you could repurpose and I just love the lace ribbon. And what I like about this sign is that it's subtle for Valentine's Day, but it can easily transition into the spring. And I intend on having this in my bedroom like year round. I just love this sign. I love the color palette and the wreath with the different texture and it was so easy to make. I can see it in your eyes that you For the second project, we will be making a rag wreath. For this wreath, you will need the heart wire wreath form from Dollar Tree, two rolls of the glitter pink tool found in the seasonal section, a fleece buffalo check blanket from Dollar Tree, and I used some scrap drop cloth. For this, I decided to first work with the buffalo check blanket, cutting off the tags so you don't see it in any of the scraps, and I just folded this in half. I wasn't sure how long I wanted these scrap pieces, so I decided to just fold it in half and cut down vertically. So using my cutting mat and my rotary blade, I just cut strips, and then I took the strip unfolded, you'll see in a second, and then cut them into smaller pieces. I'm so bad at guesstimating how long the pieces are, but I would say that they're maybe like five or six inches. Um, but this is what you have first before you cut them into smaller pieces. Obviously, as is, it is way too long for the wreath, so I just cut that piece in half, kind of first tied to see how many like of the rungs I wanted in the like piece I'm tying if that makes sense and then I cut that in half so again it's probably about like a maybe four to five inch strip you're just gonna do that for all of the pieces of fleece and I never use my cutting mat or rotary blade and oh my gosh what a difference it makes it cuts up so much faster so I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the drop cloth now this did not cut as easily with the rotary blade just because it's a little more like thick of a material but I just pressed down and then it was fine and I did not use as much of the drop cloth as I did the buffalo check blanket but that's just personal preference and then when it came to the tool I just kind of eyeballed unraveled a little bit and cut and you'll see it throughout making the wreath I kind of trim and kind of eyeball it rag wreaths don't need to be perfect and that's one of my favorite things about making them so I'm gonna show you in not a super fast speed the first section and then I'll kind of speed through the rest because it's just very redundant. But I'm just kind of alternating between the tool, the blanket, and the drop cloth and I'm just going through one like wrong I think it is or layer of the wreath and I'm just alternating between the three of them, tying them into a knot, kind of fluffing the ends as needed and just kind of trimming any long pieces. I mean, I did not cut them perfectly to even size, so some pieces you'll have to trim. And you can kind of eyeball how you want the pattern. If you want like two of the buffalo checked together, then break it up with the tool and drop cloth. 
kind of just eyeball to what you like and fluff as you go. And then you just do that for the rest of the wreath. And since I had more of the buffalo check, you'll see I kind of double that up or do that in a few rows, then add some tool in the drop cloth, making sure that I get enough tool to go around to the entire wreath even though I have less of it. So, yep, this kind of takes a little bit of time, but I just love rag wreaths. They're such a really beginner friendly, or really anyone could do them project. It's a great way to use up scraps you may have in your craft stash. And this one is just super pretty and feminine for Valentine's Day. And again, make sure you kind of fluff and trim as needed. And that is all there is to this wreath. It was made using scraps and Dollar Tree items. It cost me like three or four bucks to make. And I currently have this on my pantry door, but I plan on moving this to one of my girls' rooms once Valentine's Day is done. And I just love how this turned out. Let it The next project is a really simple textured vase. For this project, you will need one of these larger size, which is really exciting for Dollar Tree vases. I could not tell if this is a black or green, but either way, we're not using that color. So going back with the Waverly chalk paint and ballet slipper, I just went ahead, took off the ribbon that came on the vase, and I am not gonna paint the neck of this. And I'm not going to paint this super opaque that it's just like a pink wash because I want the texture of kind of that weaved look and I don't mind some of the black poking through. I think it kind of highlights more of the pink. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure you get the bottom rim of this vase and I'm going to paint using very little paint on my brush where that kind of textured weaving is. And then I'm going to go around right before the neck of the vase and paint that top rim. And that is all there is to this. I love these vases from Dollar Tree. I love that they're finally getting some items that are a little bit larger. If you go to Dollar Tree, you know a lot of their stuff is really pretty, but it's small, so it's nice to see something this size. And this is what it looks like with one coat of paint dry. And then, totally optional, but if you've watched my channel for a while, you know I love me some jute. So I'm taking my favorite Walmart jute. I get this for like $3.97 and it lasts forever. And again, if you watch my channel, you know that because I use this all the time and I have not had to replenish this in a while. So I'm just going to take some hot glue, wrap it around the neck of the vase. I wrap this around twice and kind of just applying hot glue where needed. I did more hot glue on the first layer and then every couple of turns I added it on the second layer of jute. And then I would, I thought it would be super cute to add two small jute handles. So I just cut two small even pieces of the jute, took some hot glue to either side. I found that this was easier to kind of lay the vase on its side, which you will see me do in a second, just to really press down and add enough glue. And I just added these kind of faux handles to either side. I love the mixture of the light pink against the jute, the little bit of black or green poking through and the weave. I love texture, so I was all about the texture in this vase. And to make this a little more Valentine's Day themed, I took one of these wood DIY stickers from Dollar Tree, left it unfinished, added a little bit of hot glue to it, and then pressed it right in the front. And then I added some Dollar Tree florals to this, as well as some eucalyptus picks that I've had for a while from either Walmart or Hobby Lobby. And I just love how bright this is. Again, this is another piece that can easily transition into the spring. And it was made using Dollar Tree items. So that is a win. Last project, super simple. It is a version or my take on that stacked book trend. So I'm just gonna take two books that I already had and some leftover wrapping paper. 
Since it's January, you probably still have wrapping paper left somewhere in your house, your craft room. So I love this print because it's very not Christmassy. I got this from the Target dollar spot for $1. Always nice so you can actually get something for a dollar there instead of three, five, or seven. And all I did was just wrap the books. You can use books from Dollar Tree. You can use books that you probably already have around, which I do. I used Dear John and Eat, Pray, Love. I've read these a few times like forever ago. I really need to get better with reading. I like the idea of reading. It just doesn't really happen anymore. I'm more of like an audiobook podcast girl. But anyway, I have books around. So I just wrapped them and there's really nothing to this. I just loved the neutralness of this. So I just kind of stacked them, laid some Dollar Tree florals, very spring-like. You could do white, red, this multicolor. And then taking some more of those DIY wood stickers from Dollar Tree, I decided to kind of layer them. I did a larger unfinished wood sticker and a smaller pink sticker, stacked and layered them and just kind of draped them on the books. And that is it. Super easy, a great way to utilize that gift wrap after Christmas and just a nice, transitional like after Christmas, Valentine's Day, and spring peace. So I hope you enjoyed these DIYs. I hope they gave you some inspiration for your home on a budget. If you are new to my channel coming from this collab hop, hello and welcome. I would love to have you consider joining my Weeks Nest family and hitting that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share. That really helps my channel out. And say hi in the comments. I always love talking to you guys. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.